Hi everyone and welcome back to a new video. My name is Emma if you don't know me and I make crochet tutorials here on YouTube. So guys, today we are doing this gorge pink cardigan. Um, pretty standard, um, skit, like if you're a beginner you'll be fine. Pretty standard pattern, nothing too crazy I don't think. Pretty simple, you guys will get on fine. I'm just gonna try it and go straight into the tutorial today, but I just want to say, please like the video if you enjoy it. Uh, leave a comment if you enjoyed it, and remember to subscribe if you haven't already, and turn on the post notification bell um, if you want to be notified every time I post a new video. So I really hope you guys enjoy the video today, and that you make it. If you do make it, please um, send me a picture. My Instagram, I'll just put my Instagram in the bot, or in my description, so if you wanna find my Instagram, it'll be there. So so guys, I'll leave you with that and I shall see you in the voiceover. So again, I really hope you guys enjoy it and I shall see you there. Bye. Hi everyone and welcome to the voiceover. So for this project today, we are going to need two different hooks, one five millimeter and one six millimeter. We are going to need a tapestry needle, a scissors, tape measure, and also three buttons of your choice. Um, as well as a few stitch markers and obviously yarn. So today I am using 700 grams or seven balls of special for babies chunky uh, yarn by Stylecraft in the color baby pink. Okay, so 700 grams of uh, chunky acrylic yarn. Now, of course you can use a uh, cotton yarn, you can use whatever yarn you want for this. It is completely up to you. So guys, for measurements today, we are going to need quite a few, well not quite a few, but like some. So you're gonna need the full length, shoulder to wherever you want your cardigan to fall. You're gonna need the full width, so just kind of like one side of you. Um, so just kind of like hold it across yourself and see how kind of wide you want it to be. You can make it um, not as wide if you want. Um, so whatever measurement you got there, you're gonna hold that up to your shoulders. So I got 21 inches, I'm holding that up to my shoulders and then I'm gonna hold on to the very top and I'm gonna kind of pivot the measuring tape down, if that makes sense, um, to the bottom of my arm. And so I got about 21 inches there. So with these measurements, we are gonna just write them down. So here are mine. So my full length is 16 inches. So that's kind of the top to the bottom of my cardigan. The width of my back panel is equal to kind of like the full width, that first measurement we took. And then the width of the front panel is going to be um, 21 minus one and then half, because we're gonna have like two front panels with one inch in the middle for some ribbing. The arm length, which is the last measurement we just took, um, for me that was 21 inches. Then we're also gonna need the arm width. So I didn't film that, but basically you just wrap the tape around kind of like uh, the top of your arm and you're gonna add about six to seven inches to that just to make it um, a bit oversized. Um, and then you're gonna wanna measure just around your wrist as well. For me, that was about eight inches, okay? And then this is just for you to keep in mind, all the ribbing is going to be about two inches tall, okay? So just keep that in mind because we're gonna have to kind of change some measurements um, because we're gonna need to add ribbing and blah, blah, blah. But just keep it in mind. Um, this is for the people who want to make my size. Um, across, obviously, is width, tall is length. I often like to use a cross and tall rather than width and length, but it's completely up to you. Um, but you can kind of use these measurements if you want to make a size similar to mine, or if you kind of need a better idea of what you might need, or uh, what your measurements might be. But those are my measurements anyway, just in case they would help you out at all. So just to begin today, we are going to start off with a slip knot, and um, we're actually gonna do all the ribbing first. So here I am, I'm just gonna show you how to do a slip knot. Um, I'm showing you slowly. Um, however, if you would like to go and watch this more in depth, you can have a look at my basic stitches video, which goes through it even slower than this, um, if you are a complete beginner. So here I am just making our slip knot and I am going to insert my hook in there, okay? So what we're gonna do now is, we, again, we're gonna start on the ribbing. So we have to make um, a chain first, okay? so getting everything ready with my hook, holding it in the correct position. And to make a chain, I'm gonna face my hook downwards. I'm gonna loop it up to the right and I'm gonna pull it right through that loop right there. Okay, so to do that again, we're gonna face the hook downwards, loop it up to the right, and we're gonna pull it right through that loop. So that's two chains on my hook. We're gonna do that again, face it downwards, pull it up to the right and pull it right through the loop. Okay, do that again. So face your hook downwards, pull it up to the right and pull it through the loop. 
So now we have four chains, okay? And you're gonna keep doing this until we have um, 11 chains, okay? So we're gonna keep chaining until we have a total of 11 chains. And if you are not using the same yarn as me, maybe you're using a smaller yarn, um, the measurement for this, so we're gonna want this to look like about three inches at this point, okay? Um, if you're not using the same yarn as me. So 11 chains or three inches. So what we're gonna do now is we are going to yarn over and we're gonna count three chains from our hook, okay? So there's one right there, there's number two, and that's the third chain. So keep looking at that third chain and we're gonna insert our hook into that space, okay? So we have three loops on our hook now. So we're gonna yarn over, pull that yarn through the loop like that. So we have three loops on our hook. Now we're gonna yarn over again and we're gonna pull that through all three loops like so, okay? And that's your very first half double crochet. So now we're gonna do that again. We're gonna yarn over. We're gonna insert our hook into the next space and we're gonna pull up a loop, okay? So we're gonna wrap that yarn around our hook and we're gonna pull it through. Now we have three loops on our hook and we are going to yarn over and pull through all three. Do that again, yarn over, insert your hook. We're gonna wrap the yarn around our hook and we're gonna pull it through like so. Three loops on our hook there. Now we're gonna yarn over and we're gonna pull through all three. So you're just gonna keep going all the way down until you reach the very end of the row. So going into every single space, we're gonna do a half double crochet. Okay, perfect. So here is us at the very last um, stitch of the row and you should have completed nine half double crochets at this point, okay? So now we are going to chain two like so, and we are going to flip our work around. So we're gonna turn it around like this. So we're looking at the back. Okay, so now that you can see, so those two chains that we just did, they don't, um, we're gonna disregard them. We're not gonna look at them um, as we go and start our next round. Um, that first one there, that's the uh, stitch we're gonna be going into, okay? So those chains that you just made, disregard them, okay? So don't even look at them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna yarn over and into that very first stitch of the row, we are going to insert our hook right through the middle of that V, okay? Getting that back loop onto our hook. So now we are going to yarn over and pull up a loop, three loops on our hook. Now we're gonna yarn over and pull through all three, okay? So nothing different in kind of what we're doing other than the fact that we are putting our hook through the middle of the V rather than kind of underneath both. So we're gonna yarn over again, through the middle of that V, getting that back loop onto our hook, like so. We're gonna yarn over, we're gonna pull up a loop like this. Three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all three. And to do that again, we're gonna yarn over insert right through the middle of the V, yarn over, pull up a loop, and yarn over again and pull through all three. Brilliant, so now you're gonna continue all the way down the, uh, to the end of this row, doing the exact same thing into every single stitch, and again, you should have um, nine stitches if you're following along with me using the same yarn and everything. So you're gonna have about nine um, nine stitches in this row. So here's me just completing that very last stitch of the row. Okay, that's what it's gonna look like. So now we're gonna chain two again. And we're gonna turn our work around. And we're gonna go back down doing the exact same thing as we did in the last row. So in the very first um, stitch of the row, 
again disregarding those first two chains we are going to complete um, a back loop only half double crochet so going through the middle of the V rather than through kind of both of them okay and so here's me just at the end of that row exact same method row two and three are the exact same and that's what it's going to look like so that is essentially how you do a back loop only half double crochet and what I want you to do now is what I want you to kind of gather your measurements um, for your wrists for your front panels and for your back panel okay so again we're going to be creating ribbing for the wrists of our sleeves the front panels and the back panels so here are my measurements uh, so eight inches uh, two that are 10 inches and one that's 21 inches um, and then obviously for the wrist we're going to need two the front panels we're going to need two and the back panels we're only going to need one so i want you to use this method that we just did to create um all of these pieces of ribbing if that makes sense and i'm going to show you what they're going to look like when you are finished um so here they are my five pieces of ribbing completed and if you actually if you don't know how to tie off at the end of a, um, a row or ribbing or anything check back to my basic stitches video it's just because i don't show it here uh, just because there's a lot to do um, but if you don't know how to tie off you can go ahead and learn that in that video so what we're going to do now so i'm using my back panel ribbing here okay and i'm inserting my hook just into the corner of the ribbing because we are going to create the very first row of our um, back panel so i'm just looping the yarn around my hook and pulling it right through like so holding onto my hook with my pointer finger and just chaining uh two to begin this row okay or to like attach my yarn i guess so now that i am attached i'm going to yarn over and i'm going to insert my hook into the space kind of beside my chain um because this we're gonna crochet along the top of the ribbing it's sometimes hard to know where to put your hook so we're just going to do our best to kind of find places to put our hook basically because there's no actual place to, place to do it um so here i am just doing a normal half double crochet um, and I'm going to just walk you through it now for this one I'm going to do now but just completely normal so yarn over insert your hook um, into anywhere you can find so there you go that's a good one we are going to yarn over pull up a loop so we have three loops on our hook we're going to yarn over and pull through all three and just a completely normal half double crochet okay so we are going to go all the way along the top of this ribbing okay and just doing completely normal half double crochets and also i'm um, here i'm just kind of crocheting over the end of my ribbing as well so that's like that extra little bit hanging out um so again completely normal half double crochet all the way down and for me i'm placing 56 half double crochets along this the top row and um, because with ribbing you can often find if you put too many half double crochets or whatever stitch you're doing into your initial row it can start to make your work like get wider and wider as you keep doing rows so it can be kind of confusing and if you don't do enough obviously it will just look weird and kind of stretched out so 56 is what worked for me um in my first row again this might differ for you but 56 is kind of a good ballpark if you're doing 21 inches like i am so here is my final kind of stitch of the row and to start my new row i'm just chaining two and i'm turning my work around so to start off this new row it is absolutely like plain sailing from here all that we're going to do now is we're going to yarn over and we're going to insert our hook into the very first stitch of the row like so so just inserting it in there we are going to and as you can see here we are going through uh, underneath th that v okay so we're not doing any kind of back loop only front loop only we're just doing completely normal half double crochets okay so again we are placing just one normal half double crochet into every single stitch along the row um yeah literally just completely normal and here's me at the very last stitch of this row um and this one can sometimes be tricky because i think it's the top of the chain um and so if you kind of like pull it it looks normal but it that that last one can, can be tricky sometimes so just keep an eye out for that one um and then to start off in your row again you just chain one or chain two for half double crochets and then you turn your work around and you go back along the row uh with one half double crochet into every single space okay and that's kind of how you do it that's how you make the panels basically 
Um, so here's my work at this time. Um, and so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna keep doing rows until I have the measurement of my total uh, height, okay? So for me, that was 16 inches. Um, which was in and around 36 rows. So this 16 inches includes the ribbing. So I did 14 inches of just normal half double crochet and obviously the ribbing was two inches. So just keep that in mind when you are um, doing your own back panel as well, okay? So just keep in mind the ribbing is two inches and to only go up as far, you know, as your total height, if you know what I mean, okay. So here I am doing the front panels. So I'm attaching it in the exact same way as I did with the back panel. And I am going in this time with, I think 29 stitches. Hold on, let me check. Yep, so I'm going in with 29 half double crochets um, along the top of my ribbing to start off my um, front panel uh, panels, I guess. So, Again, I'm doing it completely the same way as I did the back panel. I'm just kind of going in to whatever space I can find and I'm completing a normal half double crochet. And again, I did 29 half double crochets for my front panels. So if you're doing the same measurements as me, yours might be similar. So here I am just going all the way down this row. And these can be tricky like some of these like stitches are so tight and so difficult to get into so if you're struggling don't worry because this is the worst part of any project I think uh, crocheting into the top of ribbing it's so annoying but has to be done of course um so yeah keep going all the way down until you reach the last uh, kind of space you can go into just there and then obviously when you're done your row you're just going to chain two and you're going to turn your work around and then you're going to go back down that row with completely normal half double crochets all the way down so nothing different here than what we were doing with the back panel it's the exact same um same strategy same everything um, and then for this as we did with the last one it has to be 16 inches tall or about 36 rows so once you're complete it's completed that's what it's going to look like and you're going to need two of them and then so once you're done your back panel and your front panels this is what it's going to look like so you're going to have those two front panels and they're going to lay on the back panel and you're going to have about one inch in between them um, and that's where the kind of like middle ribbing is going to go but we're going to do that later on um, so now we are doing the um arm yeah like the sleeves the arm the sleeves um so what we're gonna do or what i'm kind of starting off with is a chain of 76 or um a ch or a chain of about 20 inches so whatever your arm width measurement was you're gonna make a chain to that width um so mine was 20 inches of course and that's about 76 chains so to start this off, we are um, gonna yarn over and like we did last time, we're gonna count three stitches from our hook and we are gonna insert our hook into that third um, chain there. And we're gonna complete a half double crochet. So we are gonna go all the way down this row with a half double crochet into every single um, chain. Okay, so in every single chain, we are going to put one half double crochet. Okay, so that's what it's gonna look like. Super simple. You're gonna go all the way down with this. So once you have completed um, putting a half double crochet into every single chain, we are going to chain two and we're gonna turn our work around. Okay, so we're gonna turn it around and as we did last time, you guys should be experts by now, we are going to half double crochet into every single space. 
um, because essentially we're just creating like a really big rectangle um, of half double crochet. So here I have said, continue doing rows until you reach your arm length subtracted by two. So my arm length is 21, so I subtracted two because our ribbing is two inches. So I'm gonna make this massive half double crochet rectangle 19 inches long, okay? So that's what they look like at the end and you're gonna need two of them. And these take quite a while, so um, good luck. <laughs> they, they take so long, uh, but they're fun because they're easy. So. This is what you're gonna have at this point. So you're gonna have two front panels, one back panel, two um, sleeves and two ribbing for the wrists, okay? So now we are gonna go back to kind of the main body of our cardigan and we're gonna create the middle ribbing now, okay? So you're gonna grab your two front panel bits. Well, actually you can just grab one, first of all. Um, and we are gonna create kind of ribbing along this edge, like the inside edge. So we are going, so I'm gonna use a five millimeter hook for this. Uh, feel free to use six, but I think like using the smaller hook, sometimes it looks a bit nicer for the ribbing, but it's up to you. So I'm just attaching my yarn to the corner of my um, cardigan and I'm going to chain six, okay? So I have a chain of six. Or if you're not using my yarn, uh, chain until you reach one inch okay so one inch or six chains so what we're going to do now is we are going to single crochet all the way down this row so we are going to go into the second chain from our hook inserting our hook we are going to yarn over pull up a loop two loops on our hook we are going to yarn over pull through two and that's a single crochet so the next one insert your hook pull up a loop, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, again, insert your hook, pull up a loop, two loops on your hook, pull through two. So go all the way down and you're gonna, you're gonna have five single crochets completed at the end of this, okay? So five single crochets. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we are going to insert our hook into the next space Kind of on our chain or not our chain our cardigan so see that insert your hook we are going to pull up a loop so wrap your yarn around the hook pull up a loop two loops on your hook and bring that first loop through the second loop okay and that's a slip stitch so into the next space you're going to pull up a loop bring that first loop through the second loop in a slip stitch okay so we've completed two slip stitches and now we're gonna turn our work around, okay? So we're looking at it kind of from the back, okay? So you can see all of our five kind of spaces or our five stitches there. So what we're gonna do, insert your hook into that first stitch through the middle, grab the back loop onto your hook and you're gonna pull up a loop, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, so we're doing a back loop only single crochet. So insert your hook through the middle of the V, get that back loop onto your hook, pull up a loop, two loops on your hook, yarn over, and pull through two. Okay, so back loop only single crochet. So again, insert your hook, into the back loop only, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. So you're gonna keep doing that until you have five back loop only single crochets completed. And here is number five. So pull up a loop, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, okay? So now we are going to chain one and we're gonna turn our work back around. Okay? So now we are going to do it again. So we are going to insert our hook into the first uh, chain, get that back loop onto your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Insert your hook through the back loop only, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. And again, you're gonna go all the way back down until you have five back loop only single crochets completed. And that's number five. 
okay and then we are going to slip stitch two okay two, two uh, stitches so pull up a loop there pull the first loop through the second loop again pull that first loop through the second loop in a slip stitch oh I'm having trouble okay we're back so now once those two slip stitches are completed we are going to turn our work around again okay so we're gonna flip it around again Okay, and so we're still looking at these um, stitches so and we're going to go back up um, the row. So get the back loop onto your hook and we're going to complete five back loop only single crochets all the way up to the top. And once you reach the top, we're gonna to chain one and we're gonna turn our work around again and we're gonna go all the way back down. So you're just gonna continue doing that rows and rows and rows. Um, and then, so I'm just showing you this part here. So I've kind of completed um, where the ribbing was and those were kind of like easy stitches to go into for the slip stitches, if you know what I mean. Um, and so at the end of this row, you were going to see that it becomes a little bit harder um, to know where to put your slip stitches just because we are now again crocheting on top um, of kind of a difficult place to put your stitches because there's no actual stitches to put into but you're just kind of gonna have to like gauge it for yourself like because if you put them too close together your ribbing's gonna go wavy so you kind of have to figure out like I'm gonna show you here so I already did one and here's me trying to figure out where to put the second one Um, so I just kind of decided this spot would be okay it turned out to be fine so if you want some inspo here you go um but that's just something to keep in mind so if you put your slip stitches too close together um on this part your ribbing will turn wavy and if you put them too far away it's gonna be very obvious um on kind of the edge of your of your ribbing when it's done so just keep that in mind if it starts to look weird just kind of reevaluate and see um where you're putting your slip stitches so here's me just kind of working away with that if you want to slow this down please do feel free to um but again here's me going putting my slip stitches figuring out where i want to put them that second one was a bit far to be honest that was a bit far away so but it turned out okay but again things to keep in mind um so i'm just going to leave you to watch this if you're still kind of confused on what to do you can slow this down and um, because this kind of uh, this method of ribbing is like it took me so long to get the hang of like I've only recently kind of got the hang of it so totally understand you know if you find this hard so do your best and I shall see you when this is completed okay okay so it's done so here we go that's the whole thing finished okay the whole thing is done and now it's time to tie off. So to tie off, uh, you just chain one. So just chain one, like so, and you are going to grab your scissors and you are going to cut your yarn, like so, and you're just gonna pull it up and you're gonna tighten that knot, okay? And that's how you tie off. So when you turn this around, um, now we have our ribbing in the middle. So now we are going to create uh, the ribbing on our second piece. Okay, so you're just gonna flip it around um, and you are going to do the ribbing on this side as well. So exact same thing. And this time we're gonna be going from the top end down to the bottom end there, okay? So for this side of the ribbing, we are going to need to create buttonholes, okay? so. What I want you to do is grab your tape measure, okay? And just lay it down on the side where the ribbing is going to be, okay? And you're gonna wanna measure nine inches, okay? So lay your ribbing down so you've measured nine inches from the bottom. And I want you to put a stitch marker um, at the very top. I want you to measure four inches down from the top and put a stitch marker in there. And then I want you to measure four inches down from that middle one and that's where your third buttonhole is going to be okay so you're going to measure fully nine inches put a stitch marker at the top four inches down stitch marker four inches down again another stitch marker okay um now this is just the way i did it if you want to put your buttons up a little higher that's absolutely okay 
Um, but this is just the way I did it. So if you want to do the same, please proceed with this way, okay? So now we are going to go ahead and attach our yarn to uh, the top um, of our work. Um, and the reason why we're going from top to bottom this time is because if we went the other way, then all the stitches would be like backwards, like they wouldn't, like they, we'd be seeing like the wrong side, if that makes sense. So um, that's why we're going from the top. So similar enough to last time, we are just going, sticking our hook into our um, the top of our work. Oh, here's me just showing that we will be creating a buttonhole there. Actually, sorry, I'm gonna let you do it yourself, I think, and I'll meet you when um, it comes time to the buttonhole because you've just done the other one, so you should be okay by now um, doing some of the ribbing on your own. It looks like I have sped it up here, so here we go, let's do it together, everyone. Let's do some ribbing on our cardigan. Um, I don't think I showed too much of this, hold on. It looks like the clip is gonna end. And there it is, okay. So you're gonna go all the way down into your first stitch marker, do the exact same thing as you were doing last time, okay? And so I'm just gonna insert my hook, doing my first slip stitch, okay? Now I have to do one more slip stitch before I can turn my work. Okay, so putting my second slip stitch into that space there. And I am going to turn my work around, okay? And then this row is the row that we are going to create our buttonhole, okay? So we're gonna start off and we're gonna put our first uh, back loop only single crochet into the first space, okay? And then for spaces two and three, we're gonna skip them, but we're gonna chain two. So we're gonna chain one and chain two. Then we're gonna skip the next two uh, stitches. We're not gonna put anything in there. So skip that one, skip that one, and then into this space here, we are just gonna do a normal back loop only single crochet. And then we're gonna do another back loop only single crochet to finish off that row. Okay, so as you can see, there's a little hole created there, okay? And that's where um, our button, uh, that's gonna be like the opposite side to our button, okay? So that's our button hole created. So then you're just gonna continue doing the exact same thing, um, or not the exact same thing, like just like the normal, rows until you are finished okay um and so everywhere that you've obviously put your stitch markers for the buttonholes make the holes in those spaces and then you'll be a okay and see these two uh, pieces of ribbing they're actually going to overlap when the buttons are all fastened at the end okay so now what we're going to do is we are going to attach the front and back panels together so we are going to grab our um, front panels and we are going to lay them over our back panel, okay? And again, the middle uh, ribbing, they should overlap, okay? So they're gonna overlap just like that. And so you can like fold out the collar, like the corners now to create the kind of like collar effect. Um, and what we're gonna do is we are going to, so you're gonna fold them out and then you're gonna attach the front and back panels together um, where, um, you kind of want the collar to stop, if that makes sense. So you can see the visual here, what I'm doing. Fold your collar out and where you want to start attaching the two sides together, just put a stitch marker there, okay? So I folded the collar back up and now I'm just gonna flip it around so it's inside out, like so. And all that I'm gonna do now is I am going to slip stitch from the corners to the stitch marker on either side or on both sides. Uh, so put your hook into the side and I'm so sorry about my hands guys. I put fake tan on and you know, it doesn't always work out the way I want it to work out. So unfortunately my hands were stained um, and I literally just couldn't get it off. So that is unfortunate, but I'm so sorry about that. Um, so I'm just attaching my yarn at the corner, similar to how we have been doing and I'm just gonna chain one, okay? So we were slip stitching in the ribbing, but I'm just gonna show you again. So you're gonna insert your hook through both sides, like that, okay? Zooming in there, so through both sides, you are going to attach, or like put your hook through both sides. Then you're gonna pull up a loop, so you have two loops on your hook, and you're gonna pull that first loop through the second loop to create a slip stitch, okay? So pull that first loop through the second loop to create a slip stitch. Then in the next space, 
we are going to insert our hook again okay pull up a loop two loops on your hook pull that first loop through the second loop and then moving on to the next one exact same thing pull the first loop through the second loop insert pull up a loop first loop through the second loop and so on so you're going to do this all the way down until you reach the stitch marker and once you get there you're just going to chain one snip off the end and pull it up and pull it tight okay to like to tie off at the end <laughs> okay so all the way down until you get to the stitch marker i believe i am showing all of all of this so enjoy the footage i didn't realize i have the whole thing in here but here we go so here we are at the stitch marker and i am just slip stitching into that final space Okay, and I'm going to chain one and I'm going to just snip off the end with a scissors. And I'm going to pull up and pull it tight to secure it. Okay, and so that is what it's going to look like at this point if I zoom out. So that's what it's going to look like. And this is the wrong side, obviously. So this is the side that's going to be like on the inside of your cardigan. And you're going to do the exact same thing on the other side as well. Okay, so the exact same thing on the other side. So I shall see you when that is completed. Okay. Right, so that is the other side all finished. And now I am going to turn my work back to the right sides. And so now it becomes a lot easier to kind of like fold down the sides for the collar and everything. Super handy. Now, before we finish off, we are going to do, or like with the kind of collar and neck area, we are going to do one round of single crochet all the way around uh, the kind of neck and the kind of top of the collar as well. So you are going to just insert your hook into the very top of the ribbing. Um, I was going to say the reason that we do this is because the kind of corners where the front and the back are connected it's kind of like looks a bit raw um, without the single crochet round so that's why we're doing this and it, like, it just kind of looks neater and everything so um, not 100% necessary but it just does look neater if you do it like this so this is me just showing you that I'm crocheting over those ends See that end I'm just crocheting over them so if you want to start getting rid of all your ends now please do that uh, because it's really annoying to have to sew them in at the end so yeah basically just single crochet all the way around crocheting over those loose ends and again single crochet just insert your hook pull up a loop yarn over and pull through two okay so all the way around we are going to continue doing single crochets so insert pull up a loop yarn over and pull through two and those loose ends you're just going to want to make sure when you're going around that they are just kind of over your hook so you don't want them underneath your hook you want them over your hook so you're able to crochet over them um okay so once that is finished this is what you're going to have and then once you fold out the corners that's going to be your collar okay so if you want to secure this at this point you can um i didn't for this one um i had for the green one but i found it was kind of like pulling up or something like it looks kind of uh, like puffy or something so I said I'm gonna leave it for this one I'm not gonna like secure it but feel free to if you want to do that um and now we are gonna start on the sleeves and the sleeves are actually quite easy so we're gonna have to attach this piece of ribbing to this larger piece um of crochet so we're gonna do this in a particular way so insert your hook into the corner of both pieces so the ribbing and the um big a piece of crochet that you have for your sleeve okay so hold them like this and just attach your yarn like so and chaining one so we're gonna slip stitch all the way down however we are going to do this again in a particular way so you are going to grab your yarn and into the piece of ribbing, okay, we're gonna go into the very like next space. So we're gonna go in the spaces closest to us on the ribbing. And then on the larger piece of fabric, we're gonna skip maybe two or three stitches and we're just gonna slip stitch, okay? So to show you that again, we are going into the space directly beside us on the ribbing. And then for the larger piece, again, we're skipping about two or three um, stitches and we're just gonna do a slip stitch. 
So again, going into the space beside us on the ribbing, skipping two or three on the larger piece and doing a slip stitch. So right beside us on the ribbing and then going, skipping two or three on the larger piece and completing a slip stitch. Okay. So I'm going to keep this clip on just so you can see exactly what I'm doing because it can be a little bit confusing sometimes. Um, but basically we're just trying to kind of attach them together um, and we're going to kind of like ruffle, ruffle, I don't know if that's the right word, but like ruffle the sleeve part so it is kind of like a, uh, like a balloon sleeve, if that's the correct phrase, maybe. I'm not sure if that's right. But you know what I mean, like that it's puffy, the wristband is still tight to your wrist, but the rest of it is kind of like puffed out. So again, just continuing on with that. So in the space right beside us for the ribbing, and that's what it's gonna look like there, if you can see that. So we're gonna go continue all the way down and it might look a bit daunting. You might like, oh my God, how can I fit in? How can I fit this massive piece of crochet into this small piece of ribbing? But you absolutely can do it. If you need to skip more than two or three stitches, you can. Uh, towards the end, I did, I think I skipped maybe like four, sometimes maybe five, it just depends. Um, on how much you have left but that is essentially how you do it so again to recap you're going to go right into the space beside you on the ribbing and then for the actual piece of sleeve you're going to skip two or three stitches okay and that's what it's going to look like at the end so we have successfully attached them both together perfect and then when you flip it back around that's the right sides facing us now um, and you're going to do the exact same thing on the other sleeve okay so that's one sleeve done you're just going to repeat this on the second sleeve okay so now you have the two sleeves completed and what we're going to do now is get our main body again we're going to flip it out or inside out so this is inside out now and we are just going to grab the front part and just kind of like spread it out so that bit in the middle there is our shoulder okay and then this is like half of the front panel and half of the back panel. So you can kind of see the position I have it in here. Okay. And remember, keep this um, wrong sides facing us. So we want to see all the seams on this side. So now we are getting the sleeve and we are just going to get the long edge of our sleeve and make sure that the sleeve, we're looking at the wrong side. So we're looking at the side with all the seams. Okay, so that side there. And you were just going to push the edge of the sleeve against the like this kind of edge of our top. Now you're just going to want to make sure that the where the shoulder is there, that's hitting the very middle of your sleeve. So that's so I have about ten centimeters on the front panel and ten centimeters on the back panel. And I'm just um, using a stitch marker to secure my sleeve while I'm crocheting. Okay, and you're gonna kinda wanna pull it up, if you know what I mean. So we're kinda crocheting like this. Um, if that makes sense. Okay, so we're kinda like pulling up, so we're kinda creating that seam there. So again, attaching, chaining one, and we are just gonna slip stitch all the way down the row until we get to the end. This bit is very simple. Um, it's just completely normal slip stitching all the way down to the end, just attaching the sleeve to our the main body of our cardigan. Okay, and so that's kind of the visual. That's what it's going to look like once that is attached. And you are just basically going to do the exact same thing on the other side as well. So exactly the same. Um, and that's just kind of the visual of what it's going to look like when it's done. And again, the same thing on the other side. Okay, so attach the sleeve in the exact same way and um, putting the mid the midpoint kind of where the shoulder is there. Make sure it's even on both sides. So now we are going to just do that edge there. So we have to attach the sides of the cardigan and we have to attach the sleeves together as well. Um, so what I'm doing here is I am just attaching my yarn and chaining one. Um, and just keep in mind this is inside out at this point. You can see the seam there on the sleeve. So I'm just slip stitching all the way down. Uh, nothing fancy here, just completely normal slip stitching 
attaching the sleeves together. Um, and then, of course, when you're when we're not um, slip stitching on like actual stitches, it can be sometimes hard uh, to do that. But again, we just have to kind of find our own um, spaces that we want to put our um, slip stitches in. So again, I'm kind of struggling here a little tiny bit, but you just have to kind of stick your hook in wherever you can find it, wherever there's space and just continue all the way down this sleeve and then onto the side of the cardigan um, until it is completed. And I think I give you a visual here at the end of the side of the cardigan, if you're confused as to where that is. Um, let me see. Yeah, okay, so when that's done, there's the kind of side of the cardigan and that's uh, the kind of the armpit area and that's the sleeve, okay? So it's all gonna be attached and the seam is gonna be on this side. And then when we, oh, here's the other side completed as well. Um, Again, there's the side of the cardigan and then there's the sleeve right there, okay? And then when we turn this right sides around, the sleeve or the seam is gonna be invisible and it will look super neat. Now, if you want to sew in your ends at this point, you can. Um, or you can do your buttons first and then sew in your ends. It's kind of up to you. So I'm now grabbing my three buttons and I am just lining them, lining them up where the kind of button holes are. So just placing them on my cardigan where the spaces for the button holes are. So just placing them on there. And now I'm just gonna grab um, a needle or a tapestry needle and I'm gonna thread my yarn through it. And I'm just going to sew on the buttons. Now, I'm not going to show it in great detail. Um, you can have a look online to see how to sew on a button. But basically, I'm just going um, kind of in an X shape um, over my button. So going up through the bottom right into the top left and then vice versa on the other side just to create an X. And then at the end, I'm just taking out... Um, or removing my needle and I'm just doing kind of like a double knot to knot that button on to my uh, cardigan. So then once that's finished, you can see now that we can do up the buttons like so. And just keep in mind also, you, you might need a smaller needle because some tapestry needles are too big and they don't fit. Um, like they don't fit through the spaces on the button. So just keep that in mind. You might need a smaller needle for that. Um, and then once that's finished and you tie in your ends or like you sew them in, then everything is completed and then you are done. So again, if you want to kind of sew your collar down, you absolutely can, um, but you don't have to. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. Um, and I hope you enjoyed it. So sorry for the um, delay. I was on my holidays. Um, but I hope to have a new video very soon. So again, thank you so much for watching and I shall see you soon. Bye.